Hey, you guys having fun here? Well, help support our efforts at patreon.com slash battlegeekplus. Welcome to Awesome Video Game Memories, where we talk about awesome memories about video games. I'm Ryan, and the game we're going to talk about today is Ninja Gaiden 3. Well, Razor's Edge and this series has a problem with third installments. So, in all honesty, I was very, very skeptical about Ninja Gaiden 3. One, Tomonobu Itagaki wasn't helming it anymore because he got fired from Tecmo. Two, it was going to be helmed by Yosuke Hayashi, who helmed Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2. You know, Ninja Gaiden Censored Sigma, where Ryu was fighting with purple mist and he was slashing people with flowers. Yes. And in all honesty, my skepticism kind of proved right. So I remember in 2012, I purchased the game. I was really hoping for the best when I played it. And wow, was I really, really underwhelmed by it. Yes, I was. Well, the good news is there was blood. There was a decent amount of blood, but limbs didn't fly out. Heads weren't rolling on the floor. And this time the enemies were like, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Please don't kill me. What? So Yosuke Hayashi turned all the enemies into pussies. And I remember that one part at the beginning of the game where the guard takes off his mask. He's like, I have a wife and kid. You can't kill me. Please don't kill me. I. I'm sorry, I can't stop this obviously scripted part. I can't do much to control. Oh my god, I'm killing him, even though I really probably should kill you. You are not human. From what I heard, one of the main themes about this game is the theme of humanity and how Ryu's killed like a whole bunch of people in the past games and now he's kind of paying for it. Like, why? Why can't Ryu just be the badass ninja that he is, just slashing everything and killing everything? No, we gotta make Ryu human so he can relate more to people. Okay, um, Hayashi, have you even played a Ninja Gaiden game before? Like, even before you did Sigma 2? So after beating the original on the Xbox 360, which I found really lackluster, I bought Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge for the Wii U as my first game for the Wii U, and it was definitely a much better game, but still not great. The good news is the blood came back. And this time the enemies weren't pussies, they were more like, FUCK YOU NINJA! YOU CHOPPED OFF MY LEG, YOU MOTHERFUCKER! FUCK YOU! That's more like it, yeah. And the thing about this game is they got rid of most of the fiends, they got rid of most of the magical, mystic, oriental stuff, and they replaced them more with military and robots and more of scientifically made monsters. But don't worry, the game still follows all the Ninja Gaiden tropes. Ryu still has a not love interest in Mizuki. Ryu finds ancient civilizations under normal places. And Ryu actually fights an actual dinosaur! Well, not dinosaur bones, but an actual dinosaur. I felt the combat took a huge step back from the second game. A little better than the first game, but now you're a little more limited on the weapons you have. You don't have the Tonfas anymore, which I really loved. Although you do get the Falcon Talons and the Eclipse Scythe and the Lunar Staff, which don't look as impressive. And the biggest thing I hated about this game is they got rid of the essence. Like why? Like when you kill an enemy, there's no more essence that comes out. Like the essence really made the big difference in the first two games where you can like not get the essence, you know, land on the ground, collect the essence and unleash an ultimate attack. In this game, you have to like wait till you killed enough enemies for the ultimate attack to appear. And the enemies are like knife sponges. They take forever to kill. Believe me, they do. In comparison to the first two games where the enemies went down easily, like the enemies take forever. Like you can't just Izuna drop enemies like you did in the previous games. And the combat in this game really encourages button mashing. And when you're lucky, you get to do this steel on bone thing where if you counter an enemy attack with a strong, but it's really hard to pull off. And But there's some enemies like the bigger ones that can't be killed unless you use this thing. I'm like, why? Well, I guess for newcomers, they can just button mash their way to victory. Well, hey, there goes the strategy of the previous Ninja Gaiden games. Only a different strategy has to be applied where you have, you know, knife sponges. 
And in this game, you're not fighting a lot of fiends. I mean, in Razor's Edge, there's fiends, but you're fighting a lot more of like military dudes, like wizards. Yeah, wizards, like seriously, that summon like cyber blocks to block you and military guys. And yeah, let's not forget the kunai climbs, these freaking mandatory, really irritating parts of the game where you have to press the left and right triggers to climb shit. And then shit falls down at you, which is really annoying, man, seriously. The previous game didn't have these kunai climbs. Like, you just got the hop up. <laughs> like, why? And oh yeah, let's not forget the bosses, you know? No longer are you fighting gigantic fiends, you're actually fighting more of giant robots, or you're fighting gods, in a way. You know, like the way this one girl called Loveless, she gets pushed into a vat and she turns her into a goddess. It's like I'm playing a different game, but with Ryu Hayabusa inserted in it. It's more like military fighter, but with Ryu Hayabusa as the protagonist. Oh yeah, this time you can't charge up the bow and arrow, and there's a lot of points where you have to use the bow and arrow to take down helicopters and these really irritating quick time events. Like, why? Why do you need quick time events in a Ninja Gaiden game? The game moves fast enough already. So many rocket ninjas. So many rocket ninjas. If you can call them ninjas. Now, now the rival of this game, who is like Genshin and Mirai, is the Regent of the Mask. And I actually kind of like this guy. Actually, fighting him is pretty cool. He's like, On guard, Ryu Hayabusa! I fight differently than most of the animes! I fight in the fencing style! I'm um, actually fighting this guy is actually really fun. And they were actually hyping this guy. Yeah, like this guy is going to be somebody that you know. He's like this really mysterious character. But don't worry, I'll reveal his identity in the end. But it's nothing really spectacular. And then when you beat him, he gives you the curse, which makes Ryu's arm all red. And then there's these really irritating parts of the game that stop the progress of the game. And then you're fighting all these enemies. And then you have to kill all the enemies before you can leave whatever dream world Ryu's arm brings him in and it absorbs the dragon sword. Yeah, the arm looks really fucked up. It's like supposed to be Ryu's punishment for all the people that he's killed in his arm. Fuck you, Ryu Hayabusa! You killed us! Also, what's cool about this game, you get to play as Ayane, Momiji, and Kasumi from Dead or Alive. And if you shake the Wii U controller... <laughs> The problem is they're a lot weaker in this game, and because of the knife sponge-ness of the enemies, the enemies take even way longer to kill with the female characters. I'm not joking. Yeah, so like while there's fiends in this game, like the Van Gelfs and the other purple fiends from the previous game, we actually get kind of more scientific fiends where they have these naked dudes in tubes and then they break out and then they mutate into bigger fiends and then you have to like cyber slice them or some shit like that, I mean. And there's these really irritating parts like the Indiana Jones boulder part of the first game where Ryu has to like run away from like obstacles and shit. I mean, it's so irritating. I mean, why couldn't they just make this game like more straight action like the second one? Why add all these kunai climbs, quick time events, and mandatory running parts where you don't even know where the hell to go most of the time? And to add more to the humanity aspect of this game, there's this little girl named Kana who's Mizuki's adopted daughter, and she's actually Ryu's biggest fan. Oh hey, scary ninja dude with the red arm, I'm your biggest fan, I think you're cool. Uh, could you marry my mommy? Now, Kana, you do know that Ryu has a not-to-love interest in every game, right? Will he still marry my mommy? And then we do another Ninja Gaiden trope where Ryu goes back to the Hayabusa village, although it's not under attack this time. And then the Black Spider Clan comes back, swearing vengeance for Genshin after Ryu gets the Blade of the Arch Fiend from his grave. And the problem is these guys easily went splat in Ninja Gaiden 2, and they take forever to kill here. Oh yeah, and there's also one part of the game where you're, you're kind of in virtual reality and you're going back to the previous Ninja Gaiden games. It's nice that this game reminds me of better games in the series. And sadly, Ryu's father, who's now blinded, I don't even know how that happened, that there's no real way for Ryu to cure his arm problem. And so Ryu goes to the Antarctica, where we have the other Ninja Gaiden trope of, hey, there's a base, and there's another hidden civilization underwards, and hey, Ryu has to fight another clone of himself. Oh, wow. And this is where Cliff Higgins reveals himself to be a bad guy. Where the fuck was Cliff again? And then it's revealed that the Regent of the Mask was actually Theodore Higgins, Cliff's brother and Kana's biological father. Who the fuck was Theodore? 
Like they were trying to hype up this character so much I thought it was gonna be the Jocchio or somebody else, but no, it's nobody I fucking give a shit about. Although it is actually pretty cool, Robert T. Sturgeon from the second game makes a cameo appearance as a fighter pilot. And not Irene makes an appearance in Ayane's second stage. Come on, that's Sonya. That has to be Sonya. Oh, I know Ryu Hayabusa. I really do. That is so not Irene. Hayashi, have, have you played an NES Ninja Gaiden game at all? Oh, and hey, Obaba comes back in a dream world where you have to kill her again. Okay. Rehash. Oh, hey, then Ashtar makes a cameo. Well, not the Ashtar from the second game, but he's this old man who pilots this giant tank on this ship. You know, the ninja ship. Because ships are a thing now in Ninja Gaiden. You know, I actually do miss Tyron and all the underground stuff from the previous games. I guess Ryu sunk his battleship. Uh, uh, uh. And then we hit the last level where you fight Cliff as a god. And then after that you get Theodore to come back to his senses and he, he aids you. And then you have to fight him again. So he atones for his sins and he gets rid of your little arm problem. And then after that Kana becomes the goddess. So basically the final boss is a little girl. And then Ryu unmasks himself. Yeah, there's a lot of unmasking of Ryu in this game. I guess this is meant to be the last one. It apparently is. So you beat Kana, she turns back to normal, and then you leave your not love interest Mizuki alone. Three games in a row, Ryu, although I don't know what happened at the end of the second. And as pointless as it was in the previous game, they added more multiplayer in this game. And you get to team up with people to kill enemies, or you get to team up with other people to kill other people. And I don't think this game really lends itself much to multiplayer, because it's so easy to just block, and whoever gets their Izuna drop in first is actually the winner. And I wasn't really that good at multiplayer in this game. And if you try to play multiplayer on the Xbox version, it nobody's playing. Although I was surprised at the time I recorded this, I was actually able to play multiplayer on the Wii U version against one person who kicked my ass. And of course you get to upgrade weapons, but the weapons aren't even as flashy anymore in this game. And surprisingly, this game did not get a PS Vita version. Well, why the fuck would I want to play this on the go anyways? So yeah, Ninja Gaiden 3, just like Ninja Gaiden 3 on the NES, suffers from Ninja Gaiden 3rd-itis, where third installments in this game tend to be the weakest one. Well, obviously, since Tomino Itagaki left, yeah, Yosuke Hayashi didn't do that good of a job kind of carrying the legacy. I mean, why, you know, put Ryu more in a human, more military-like setting? Like, I was hoping the third Ninja Gaiden game would take place entirely in the Fiend Realm. Like, yeah, imagine going in the crazy-ass Fiend Realm with demons all over the place and you're chopping them up. I don't understand why they had to nerf the combat. I think they really nerfed the combat more for beginners of the series, but this is the third game. The beginners can go back and play the other games. Yeah, so Ninja Gaiden 3 was a big disappointment in my opinion, and sadly this is kind of the last standard Ninja Gaiden game we're probably going to get for a little while. I mean, there's no word of a Ninja Gaiden 4 coming out for the Xbox One or the PS4, but I hope they make one and I hope they fix things. I hope they make the combat good again. I hope they, you know, make it take place more in the Fiend Realm, you know? I mean, Razor's Edge was a decent effort to make it better, but it still wasn't that great. Yeah, so you can get any version of Ninja Gaiden 3 for pretty cheap. I mean, they're not very expensive. You can even get brand new Razor's Edges on the Wii U for about like 10 bucks. All right, so that ends this episode of Awesome Video Game Memories about Ninja Gaiden 3. And if you have any memories about this game, make sure to leave those in the comments below and I have a mission to complete. Hey, did you like what you see? Then come check us out at twitch.tv slash battlegeekplus.